Hey everybody, Matthew Armstrong here on this 100 day challenge to create financial freedom in our lives. And if you haven't already done so, make a decision and join our team now. This is the fastest way to make a sizable income online that I have ever come across in my life. And you know, if you're watching these videos, you want to do the same too. So, you know, you know what's with all the procrastination? Just make a decision now, get on board and just just, just do it. You know, it's about taking massive action. When you take massive action, you know, things happen, right? So what I want to talk to you about today is, and by the way, if you haven't already watched video one, click on the link here, watch video one, and then watch them sequentially. That's really important. What I want to talk about was balancing our perceptions today, because quite often we perceive things as going bad for us or going good for us, or um, you know, sometimes we, we're on this roller coaster where we're, where we're down or we're up or you know whatever things are flowing or they're not flowing, and it's just when we, our perceptions are unbalanced that that sort of thing happens. You know, um, like for example, I, I saw I saw one of the comments. Somebody says the only bank account that matters is the spiritual bank account. You know, that's a, such a lopsided, unbalanced perception um, in in this world, right? You know, go and tell that, you know, to the father who's just been kicked out and his kids are starving on the street because uh, he hasn't had the, the money in his bank to be able to feed them or pay the rent. You know, he'll just smack you in the face, right? You know, <laughs> so that's the reality of it. You know, so, so let's, let's get real here. Let, let, let go of all the, the immaturity. If, you, if you're watching these videos and you're still full of all that immaturity about, you know, I've seen comments like, shame on you, um, I'm so disappointed in you. It's just ridiculous. It's just immature, you know. And you know, I laugh at it, and at the same time, I think that, that's sad. That that person is so unbalanced in uh, in who they are, and uh, it's just just immaturity. It's like school. It's like schoolyard stuff, you know. And the person just hasn't grown up emotionally since school time. Um. So you know, you but you can change that right now, anytime you want, right? So what I want to talk to you about first of all was you know I look back at my life. And I, I see times when I thought things were really bad. And if I actually look, you know, what, what happened there and then the chain of events afterwards, what I actually see is that actually that was a blessing in disguise. You know, and then I look at something that's been really good in my life. I look at the chain of events afterwards and actually, I can actually see some things that haven't gone so good after that. So I'm like, okay, so you know, what's good and what's bad? Well, it's, it's not. It's... it's you know, the universe is always seeking balance. But sometimes, because we can only see so far in front of our face, we don't, we don't see the full picture, right? But to, so what we want to get is a conscious understanding of the universe and how reality works, right? And have a balanced perception of everything, of whatever event happens to us. So I remember you know, it was a huge, huge dream of mine was to become an elite soldier as, as a child. And I think I might have told the story about my asthma and all that. But anyway, so I was in the Royal Marines Commandos. And it's the longest uh, infantry training in the world of, of any, any other forces. And it was arduous as well. And after four months of, of like serious, serious uh, training, I got a stress fracture in, my t in the top of my tibia from just pounding the road so much, carrying heavy weights. Just, just went. And it was on a criteria test, halfway through training. It was on a criteria um, nine mile speed march with, with full kit, you know, running up the hill the whole way. Halfway along that, my leg, my foot started flapping on the ground. It wouldn't work properly. And I carried on going anyway. I, I didn't feel any major pain at the time. I just, my leg just stopped working properly. And most of my other leg was compensating and that was starting to get sort of burnt out in lactic acid. And uh, it was a very, very tough, and the whole troop was sprawled out in a big long line and there's about six core six people at the front of the core group and I was just struggling just to keep with them got to the end and I actually passed the speed march but when we sat down to to cool down and stretch down and everything when my body cooled down the pain set in and it was just like it, it like I'd been stabbed through the through, through the, the shin bone and uh, I just knew that my leg was broken I knew it was a serious serious thing that that pain that I felt and then we had to get back into the get into the wagons to get to get uh, um, you know sent, sent back to camp, and uh, and I was sitting I was sitting there and my leg was throbbing I knew it was broken, 
and I could see that you know I was going to get back to it. I wasn't going to stay with those same set of guys who I started with, who I'd been with for four months. Uh, a lot of people have been back to for various reasons throughout that time, but I wanted I was the person that wanted to be in that same original troop throughout training. Because what they used to do when someone left training, they would there was a photograph with everyone in the troop on it up on the, the, the wall. And they used to black out their faces when someone got back to it for some reason, they black out their face. And I was like, I'm never gonna be one of those blacked out faces. And there it was happening, the reality was dawning, I was gonna be a blacked out face, you know. And uh, so I actually started crying. You know, I, I, was, I was that upset about it. I was that upset about it. I, was, I was just knew my leg was broken. There's nothing I could do. It was just pure frustration. You know, so I just, uh, I just started crying. And the guy's like, you know, what the fuck's wrong with you? And, uh, you know, I, just, I, I didn't care because I was just so upset about my leg. Anyway, so, yeah, I spent five months on, in rehabilitation, getting, uh, you know, resting my leg, getting back. I was in a remedial troop for five months. And in that time, what actually happened was, um, at first I thought it was the worst thing that could ever happen in the world. But in that time I started to get really, really fit. Uh, once my leg healed up, I had a chance to get really, really fit and we did like three hours every single day, an hour of swimming, an hour of running, an hour in the gym. And I, I got super fit, like, like a triathlete would, you know. Um, and then I also got a chance to actually study everything I'd learned in like, well, that had been crammed into me in those four months. I actually got time to actually study it properly. I studied like all my map reading and all my military skills and all that and I got really good at it. So by the time I went back into a new troop, I got I started back in at the same place where I kind of left off. My troop had just finished training by that time, my original one. When I got slotted in there, it was like, boom, I, I was like super, super marine at the time. I straight away as the fittest guy in the troop, I you know, had more, more knowledge, more skills, more, more confidence than anyone else in the troop and uh, I, I just really, really excelled. And so the next four months of training for me was highly enjoyable because I was, I, I excelled so much in the troop and I got respect from you know, the guys in the troop, respect from the training team. I got the record for the assault course. You know, it was, it was an incredible feeling. Um, and then after training, my original troop, they got, they got sent to a place where I didn't want to, they got sent to guard uh, nuclear submarines in Scotland for two years. But then the troop I went into, we got sent to the Caribbean, we got sent to all these cool places, we got to sail all around these cool places and go to the jungle training, go to the Arctic that year. We had this most amazing year because I went to a different place after finishing training because of the troop I was in. And then if I look back at everything that happened after that point, all the really cool things that happened, I'm like, wow, I'm so glad I broke my leg. You know? <laughs> so it's it's like balancing our perception when something seemingly bad happens, you know, whether it's in our life or in our, with our health or with our business or whatever. It's actually balancing things out and saying, okay, what's great about this, or what could be great about this, or what's the benefit of this, what could be the benefit of this, you know, wonder what is the benefit of this, and you know, answers will come, right? So it's just asking empowering questions will you know give empowering um, answers back and uh, make you take empowering actions. So, you know, if something goes completely wrong, you completely screw up, you make a mistake, go, okay, great, what can I learn from this? Um, and when I look back at my life, everything that's happened to me that has seemingly been bad is actually a blessing in disguise. So everything is a blessing. I, I just see everything as a blessing. And even when something bad does happen, supposedly bad, um, I, I, I know sometimes I get caught up in it, but then I've got to step back and go, okay, well, what's great about this? and uh, then just balance the perceptions and see all stressings as blessings. It's, uh, that, that's what to do. And when we can do that, then we can begin to master our lives. When we can begin to see the, um, any um, flack we're getting from one side, you know, people abusing us you know, verbally or whatever, that, that's great because there's gonna be a balanced out somewhere else. Somewhere else there's gonna be, someone's gonna be praising us. And it's, it's amazing just to see that that ebb and flow and that balance of the universe, always harmonizing itself. Um, so whatever happens, you know, your business goes down the drain, great, what can I learn from this? You know, it's, it's uh, look, look back at your life, here's the thing, look back at your life and see everything that has supposedly gone wrong and find out what's great about that. And uh, you could, sometimes you gotta dig deep, if, especially if it's a traumatic sort of thing, you know, you gotta dig deep. Um, if, you, if you do, if you can face it, not, not be in denial, 
because that's the thing, you know, uh, a lot of people are in denial about, about reality, you know, and they, 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 because they're so much in denial, they think they're spiritual, and they go into this, this spiritual thing, and they den deny materialism, and by denying materialism, it's completely lopsided, it's completely off balance, and it's, it's a place of denial, so, you know, get real, balance everything out, see everything as a blessing, because everything is a blessing, but the universe is always balancing itself. If only we could just see it, and we can through asking empowering questions. So that's what you do, and if you haven't already done so, make the decision now, click on the link below, join the team, watch all 100 of these videos. I don't know what's coming next, but what I do is I align my constant, my unconscious, and my higher self, and I just say, whatever is, needs to come out right now, let it come out, and that I'm just trusting in that right now, and uh, it seems to be working pretty well.